Hey everybody, welcome back to The Engineered Angler. I'm back in the shop. I had a great day on the water last Saturday. It was a beautiful, beautiful day. This time of year is so nice. It's just cool enough to wear a jacket, but not so cold that you end up getting really exhausted just from being out in the cold. Today, we're gonna make another topwater lure. I wanna make a topwater lure that is a solid walk the dog lure, but for salt water, but not so big that I can't put a nice freshwater paint job and use it in the lake, but big enough that I can get a long cast I can fit a big knocker rattle in it and I can get a good aggressive walk the dog uh, action out of that lure. So let's talk about the design a little more on the dry race board. So first let's talk about the general shape. I'm guiding myself off of this lure that I designed of months ago and I really find that it has a combination of castability and walk the dog behavior that I think is just about perfect. It creates enough drag up close to the front so I get that drag in the front, momentum in the back that pushes the tail around and gets you that big walk the dog without a whole lot of effort. So on this one, I'm going to repeat that shape, but I want it to be sort of lathe friendly. I want to be able to shape this on the lathe and then create these flat spots by just putting it on the belt sander a little bit and get that flat spot. So the nice thing about knowing that I'm going to make a mold for this thing is that I don't have to worry about engineering the lure. I'm just going to focus on design because I already know how to shape the body to be sure it, it'll cast well and that it'll walk the dog really well. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I made a video on how to adjust your weight and balance on a walk the dog lure and I'll put the link to that, well, right up here and in the description as well. I want it to be four inches long, seven eighths of an inch at its widest point. And I want that widest point to be one third of the way back, one and three eighths of an inch from the nose. Let's call that purple line the center line. I put it there just to show you the relative location of the tie on eye at the front and then the tail hook eye as well. And you'll notice they're both below the center line. And that's what you want on a lure like this. I'm going to locate this belly hook eye right at the one third mark to help a little bit with the balance. And that's the design. And after I have a mold, I can actually cast a lure and I can do a couple of experiments to really refine where the weight should be and how big of a rattle I can put in it. All right, that's good enough. As you can see, I've already gotten started work on it and I've made a bit of a mess. I've got the general shape in. I've got the wide point more or less where I want it. And I've just got to taper it down a little more and tapered the front down a lot more. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've got the uh, wide spot exactly where I want it. That looks pretty good. looking pretty nice. There's a couple of minor little flaws I'm going to fill in with some uh, UV resin. And you got to keep in mind that really this is just the master. I'm only going to use this thing to make the mold. And so it's all about just the form, the smoothness on the outside and the final shape that I put into it with the sander. An allure that obviously is completely symmetrical because it's made on a lathe so it's always going to be symmetrical about, about the center, right? But I don't want it to be completely symmetrical so I'm going to add some asymmetry just a little bit on the front and on the back. But to be able to do that I need to know where the bottom is going to be or where the top is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that that natural grain line that runs down there I'm going to call that the bottom of the lure and that'll help me align that flat spot on the front and I want to taper the very tail down so it ends up looking a little less sort of machine made. I created kind of a little asymmetrical flat spot just below the center line 
that's gonna work out perfect. I'm gonna continue to round it off and sort of blend it with the rest of the shape and then we'll get to the front. That's got the front started. Let me put in that little flat chamfer where I'm gonna actually put in my tie on eye. Now you can see where you get that. A little bit of a kind of a natural asymmetry. Now I'm gonna do one more thing and I'm gonna flatten the curve from the end of that flat spot I already put in there back to about just before the widest point. And that would be that barely perceptible flat spot right there. All right, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see that, but it's just a subtle little chamfer and that should do it for the shape. I'm gonna go ahead and sand all these areas where I did the shaping with this just to give it a nice smooth finish. And then I'm gonna drill some eye sockets in this. Let's get back to the shop. All right, I've got it pretty much smoothed out. You can see the flat spot, both that part of it and the longer flat spot. And you can see that the top tapers down more quickly than the bottom. And I think that just makes it look a little more natural. So let's go ahead and put the locations for the eyes. Start off with a dot, and then I'm gonna try to carry that dot to the other side by just doing the exact same thing, but guiding myself by the location of the dot. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Seem pretty symmetric. I'm gonna go ahead and drill them out with this little 3 8 Forstner bit and just make a shallow socket. And the idea is just a little shallow socket. What I'm gonna do is install some screw in eyes. And I'd like to do that because for the mold master, I want a thick wire to set a little embossed sort of area where I know my, uh, uh, my wire will be when I actually cast one of these things. So let's go ahead and get drilling and I'll screw in those eyes. All right, before I can actually make a mold of this, I like to have it really smooth. And so I like to put a single coat of resin on it, a clear coat, and I'll use the UV resin. But I'm also gonna use the UV resin as a little bit of a filler. If you're making eye sockets like I do, you end up with that deep divot in the very center. You wanna fill that in because what happens is, once you put the eye on and put your final clear coat on, the little bit of air behind there can sometimes bubble out around the eye and kind of ruin your finish. I'll fill it in pretty much level and then put it under my UV light. And there you go. They're filled in and I don't have to worry about those air pockets. All right, let's put a quick clear coat on it. Turn the lights on. And close her up. When this comes out, we'll be ready to put this thing in a clay base, in a mold box, and mold that first half of the mold. All right, so it's been a minute since I've been able to come back out here and work on this, but the clear coat is long since set. We've got a nice, shiny, smooth, glossy clear coat, and we're ready to make the mold box so let's get to it. Now I like to make my mold boxes out of these Lego blocks because you can make just about any size and they're reusable and easy to clean up. But if this is your first time doing it, you can certainly make a disposable box out of a piece of cardboard or some thin plastic sheets. Now I need to make a clay base in the box and I'm softening up the clay with the warmth of my hand. 
I'll lay it out and then I'll spread it in the bottom. Now I need to fill in that little bit of a gap and get a nice clean seam line. Using a little bit of alcohol and a towel, I'll wipe it down real smooth. There's a lot of stuff from the clay on it. And here I'm forming half the sprue, which is basically what will be the port that I use to pour the uh, two-part resin in. Using the back of a pencil, I'll make some indentations, and these will form the locking keys, and that'll keep the two halves of the mold aligned. Hopefully this stuff is still good. It looked a little thick, but hopefully it'll mix well and we'll get halfway decent mold. And I like putting a very thin coat on top of the lure first. And that should give us a nice bubble free pour. So let's get the rest in here. I gotta say, Smooth On usually makes a really good product, but for some reason this last batch I got uh, just had a really short shelf life. All right, so this will take about six hours to cure and we'll pour the other side. And while we wait for this thing to get nice and hard, I wanna let you know I designed another t-shirt and I'm pretty proud of this, this is pretty cool. It's just amazing to me the technology available to the average schmuck when I can take a lure I designed, take a photograph of it, manipulate it to look like a black and white sketch, put it on a t-shirt and have it at my door in just a couple of weeks. It's just amazing to me. But anyway, if you guys are interested, I tried to set the price as low as I could on this thing, but with all the technology, anything custom is just a little more expensive. Anyway, it's on my merch shelf just below the video. If you go down there, you can click on it and take a look at everything uh, in that store. And it comes in long sleeve and short sleeve and a few different colors too. So if you're interested, check it out. It helps support the channel and keeps me in all the gear that I need to do these things. So thanks to everybody who ends up buying one. Well, it feels like it's pretty much set. I've got some areas that feel maybe a little softer than I want it to be, but I'm in a hurry because this is really my last opportunity for a while to really get this done. It's already nighttime. So the next step is to pull this clay out of here. All right, not too bad. It's gonna be a little more cleanup than I expected. All right. So after going at it with a little stiff brush and some uh, masking tape, I've got it pretty clean. Now I gotta make the other half of the little sprue just like the one I made for this side. And there's nothing very technical about this. It's just a matter of saving yourself a little work later. And I cannot forget to put the Vaseline on everything. The last mold I made, I forgot, and that was a bit of a disaster. So we're getting Vaseline on everything. Definitely have to get them on all these little pegs. All right, so I've wiped down the surface of the uh, lure itself, and I'm pretty confident we've got it coated everywhere else. Oh man, 
it had a hard spot and I had to get it out. What a mess. Well, it's mixing. It's still thick, but I think we'll be able to do a pour. I think we just barely had enough to get it in there. All right, now I just need to clean up this mess and wait another six hours or so. So we'll continue this in the morning. If you guys are enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up. It really does help with the algorithm. All right, we'll be back. All right, we're back. Everything feels like it's set up really well, even with the cold weather. So let's get started here. Let's open it up. Hopefully it's not stuck together. Oh, looks like it's coming apart pretty good. All right. All right, look at that. Nice. Let's see what this side's look like. Pull this off. Hopefully it, oh man, I think it's stuck. Oh no. Look at that. That's awful. Wow, that is terrible. I've never had this happen before. So, we're gonna have to find some other way. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's nuts, man. It's not supposed to stick to anything. So, that means I'm gonna have to find a way to take this stuff off without damaging my lure. With every catastrophe, you learn a lot. So, I'll get back to you when I'm ready to cast the mold again. I was able to clean it off really nicely and rebuild this box. So I gotta say, rebuilding the box was as big a pain as actually cleaning off the lure. All right, brand new box. All right, I got a heater going. Let's see if we can't warm this thing up a little bit. And I know some of you are out there panicking, thinking that I haven't put on the Vaseline, but I did. I Vaselined everything. I know you guys are out there. Come on, man. One catastrophe per video only. Come on. For the poor. Deja vu all over again, man. Hopefully, we'll get a good set this time and we'll be back to actually do the true reveal. All right, so we lost the day with that absolute ridiculous catastrophe there. And of all days, this is Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving late, I guess. Let's go ahead and do a second take on this reveal. Hope I didn't screw anything else up. We're gonna have to wait for next week for this video. Thank you. All right, so here comes the moment of truth again. Oh, yes, it's coming apart. Oh, yes. It right, looks good, let's make sure it's not stuck. Oh man, what is going on? It's still stuck. That is the strangest thing ever. Look at that. Well, I'm not exactly sure what could have caused that. It seems like the only times I have problems making lure molds is when I'm trying to make a video for YouTube. As bad as this side of the lure is, I'm gonna go ahead and cast it and we'll go ahead, at least we'll be able to do the weight and balance and I'll show you how I do it. And I think I'll go ahead and put a rattle chamber in there just to uh, speed up the process and, and bring this video to some sort of end. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a wire harness and I'm gonna make a educated guess on where to put the weight
So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my level line technique to find where I wanna put the weights inside the body. And I just take a piece of tape and sort of tape it on the center line of the top of the body. And I'm going to pop a bunch of little holes in it with a pin. And now I'll hang it on the dry erase board uh, right with that plumb line. I'll show you what I mean. All right, so now with the hooks that I'm going to use in place, I'm going to go ahead and poke it through one of the holes. And I'll put the center of this hanger right on that T. And you can see it's way too tail down. I want it to be level. The hanger one hole back. And that's pretty close. It's still a little tail down. All right, that's perfect. Now I can just mark where that vertical line crosses the body. And so I can take that line and transfer it over to the appropriate location on my wire harness. And that's where I'm going to center my weight. All right, so I transferred the mark from the uh, lure onto the piece of wire here. Got one little weight already forward of that mark. And then my rattle chamber will go just behind that, and that should balance out. This is a little bit of trial and error, but kind of educated trial and error. And then I'll just drop it in the mold, and we'll put the mold together, and let's go ahead and pour the first one. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. I'm ready to open this thing up. Let's see if we can't get a lure in the water today. Well, that side looks beautiful. And this side looks like some kind of disaster. More sanding for me. Got a nice rattle in it. I won't bore you with sanding. I'm gonna sand this down and we'll take this down to the water, see if it'll actually walk the dog the way I want it to. All right, we're down here at the dock. Hopefully it doesn't get too overcast. Let's see what this thing looks like just sitting in the water. Let's see if I can hear the rattle. Oh yeah. All right, let's see if I can actually get it to walk the dog with the way I have it weighted. Oh yeah, look at that. see how far I can cast this thing. I got a feeling it's going to cast like a bullet. <laughs> I wasn't even trying. It gets out there. All right. Well, I guess that's it for this lure build this time. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next Friday.